Hey there friends, welcome to a lesson with Artsy Rose. Today we are gonna be painting on a canvas using a smaller brush and a bigger brush, a Sharpie. You may wanna find a pencil so you can sketch out on the canvas first, and then acrylic paints. Now, you'll also need a cup of water. Do not use your best cup because it will not wash clean. Now, parents, while you get your area set up for your kiddos, go send them off to get in some clothes that it doesn't matter if they get paint on them. And um, make sure you put a cover down on the table so that way they don't get paint where it's not supposed to be might not even hurt to put it on the floor. Uh, we're gonna be learning a lot of techniques that you'll be able to do with your kiddos, so I'm super excited. Um, I am gonna start out with a Sharpie, uh, just so you can see what I'm doing. But like I said earlier, you may wanna use a pencil. Uh, I will say, if you drag your hand through as you're drawing, you could potentially smear the pencil lines, but after you trace them with Sharpie, you just take a big old eraser to it and get rid of all of those smears. Plus, the acrylic paints will cover them up. So I thought we would do a puppy dog today, just for fun. Lots of people love puppy dogs, they make you happy. And I thought we would kind of do it in the style of Romero Brito, uh, kind of a fun pop art style. So I have a 10 by 10 canvas. Of course, you could do any size canvas would be great. I am gonna block off, well actually down here, I'm gonna draw just a fun little flower and draw some little leaves and a center. So I did frowny face curve, backward C, U, another curve, another curve, a leaf, and a leaf, which is just comprised of curved lines again, okay? From here, I am going to draw a vertical, horizontal, vertical, and horizontal again. So now we have a fun frame, right? So inside of here is where I'm gonna put my dock. Now, I am gonna start with the curve of the head, and then I am going to move down a little ways, and I'm gonna do just a cute little upside down triangle nose. From here, I'll go vertical, and then curve around, curve around, curve. So we did an upside down triangle, and then a vertical line, connect with what sort of looks like a C, and a backward C, and a U. You wanna make sure that you're drawing with your whole arm. If you're only drawing with just your wrist or your fingers, your drawing's gonna be really small. We're trying to fill the space, okay? So now I'm gonna add some puppy dog ears, so a little bit of a curve, little bit of a curve and a curve. Then we've got another ear on this side and a curve and a curve. And then right here, we'll connect to the face, connect to the face, and then we'll come down and down. And right now, our little doggy, the rest of it goes right out of the picture. So from here, we'll draw a little curve and then maybe put the tag. There we go, so cute. And then maybe we can see just a little bit of where the legs come apart. Now, back here, we might be able to see a little bit of the back legs and a little bit of the body connecting, just like that. Straighten that up a little, okay? So now we have our basic body shape of our little doggy. We could even do a cute little tail back there. So for the eyes, I have learned over time that kiddos like to do their eyes a certain kind of way. 
So now is the time to let them do those eyes however they want to. Put a little shine, put a little shine. Maybe give it some eyebrows. And that, my friends, is our cute little doggy drawing. So really, we created this out of lines and shapes that all came together into one design. So if you just did that in pencil, pause this video just for a moment and trace all your lines with Sharpie, okay? After you get all of your lines traced with Sharpie, if there's any details you want to add to the frame, you could go ahead and do that. It's really up to you if you want to put any of these details in or not. I'm just drawing triangles that sort of fit together into this puzzle type shape. Kind of all fitting so nicely and perfectly. I love it. There we go. And there we go. Just like that. So now we're ready for the fun part. We get to paint. So like I was saying earlier, you need a water cup, not for drinking. This is definitely for cleaning your brush. And I have a couple size brushes. If you have more brushes at home, the better. I always use the smaller brush in the smaller areas and the bigger brushes in the bigger areas. I started out with just the basic primary colors. Red, yellow, and blue belong to the primary color family. I have white for lightning, and then I threw in some turquoise for fun, and purple's a little tricky to make, so I threw some purple on my plate as well. Now, I am going to use my smaller of the two brushes, and I need to think, okay, what, what do I want to do first? What kind of colors do I want in this? And really, there's no wrong answer. You can do this however you want. So if I wanted to, let's say I want to do a turquoise frame, I could get a little bit of turquoise on my brush, okay? Hold it just like you hold a pencil, right where the metal and the handle touch. And I am going to paint over... All of those Sharpie lines and I know that seems silly but this paint is just a little bit see-through because I'm just putting a nice normal thin layer on sweeping it back and forth and actually I could even use my bigger brush right now so I have to put this one in the water and go ahead and start working on getting this all filled in We'll get our edges done back here. Go down the sides. I like to do the edges and the sides because it makes my painting look a little bit more finished. I just have to remember to do the bottom later. That's where it looks a little funny if you do all three sides, but then you forget to do the very bottom edge. So we'll get that edge done. And then we'll work on getting this side over here. Smooth that out. There we go. Here we go. Get that all on there. And then right here, I'm going to come down. Just like that. And the nice thing about acrylics is if you accidentally get some acrylic paint where you don't mean to, you have two choices. Choice number one, wrap your napkin up around your finger and then dip it in your water and you can just rub that oopsie spot right off, right? So you've got the napkin wrapped around your finger, you dip it in the water, you rub, 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 and you can get the oopsie right off of the canvas. Or you can let it dry and then we just paint over it. No big deal. So again, acrylics are pretty cool in the fact that they're very versatile. 
but if you get them on your clothes, you better run to the sink real quick and scrub it out, or otherwise you'll remember this painting experience every time you put that outfit on. So now that I have the majority of the frame painted, I'm going to let it dry and then I'll come back and I'll do the border here in a little bit. So now to clean my brush, I have to really smush and swirl just like a ballerina, smush and swirl, no tap dancing or you will splash yourself or your neighbor. Instead, you wipe your brush on the inside of the cup and then this next step is super important. You have to dry your brush every time you wash it. So I just sweep, sweep, sweep to get the extra water out. So next, I am going to take a glob of white and I'm going to move it over to my purple. I'm going to take about a chocolate chip amount of purple paint and mix that into my white. So now I've made this really pretty light lavenderish color purple, right? So I've got this really pretty light purple mixed in here. We want to get the extra paint off our brush, so I just kind of roll it just like that. And then in here, I could use the background behind my dog to be this light purple. So I'm going to outline the inside of the Sharpie first, very carefully, go around and around and around. There we go. And so as I outline, I'm filling in. So I outline and then I fill in. Now you have to be really careful in this process because our border is still wet, right? So if I get too close to my border, then I get my border color on my brush and then I accidentally blend it into my background. So you have to go slow and steady, just like the tortoise and tortoise and the hare, because there's no rush, no race. There we go. And come down here and come around here. And we get that little background all filled in. Now typically I'm not all about nice and smooth. A lot of times I'll just sort of swirl my brush, make curve lines, dab it, and give it a little bit of texture, right? So now we have our background behind the doggy filled in. So before I get too much further, you could either use black paint for this part, or you could use your Sharpie, and I'm gonna go ahead and color in these pupils. Never ever use a marker on anything that has wet paint because it will just clog up your Sharpie and totally ruin it. There we go. There, now that will help with that. So I'm gonna clean my brush again. I really smush and swirl, wipe on the inside of the cup, and then dry, 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 dry. Okay, so next I need to think about this cute little puppy. And if I'm going in Brito style, my puppy might be extra, like extra, okay? So I am going to grab some white and put it over here by my blue and kind of mix some blue and my white together. So now I have a light blue and maybe this half of the face is going to be light blue. And I'm going to outline, 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 just like this. And then I will fill it in. And since over there was blue, maybe I'll do over here blue. So we'll outline. I am pushing my brush very gently on the canvas and then fill it in. Just like that. 
Now if I wanted to make a green, since you make green from blue and yellow, I could just leave the color of my brush, scrape from the side of the yellow, because I don't want to ruin it all, and then grab just a little mini chocolate chip amount of blue and mix that in, and so now I'm making a green. If that's not a dark enough green, you get a little bit more blue and mix it in, and you keep doing this until you like your color that you've made. It's always better just to add in a little at a time because once it's in there, we cannot take it out. So we just mix, 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 just like this. Get it all mixed up. Try to keep it in a little pile on your plate. You don't want to waste. Roll the extra off. And then we could use this color somewhere else. So we've got our awesome blended green in there now. So this is a lot of yellow and a little bit of blue at a time until you like it. And as I'm painting, I don't want to leave any white spots, not even little bitty ones, okay? And I might also do the little tail green as well. There we go, and anytime you're in a little space, you wanna push very gently with your brush so that way you keep the paint in a very small space. The harder you push with your brush, the thicker the brush stroke or the, or the paint line will be on your canvas. Smush and swirl gently, wipe on the inside of my cup, and then dry, dry, dry. So now I am going to um, hmm. maybe I should use some straight yellow, although I am going to mix a little bit of white and yellow together, and I will do ooh, maybe more yellow. I'll do this ear, yellow and white mixed together, outline and fill in. Now it's super hard to not paint your Sharpie lines, so when you're all finished, you can always go back and retrace these Sharpie lines with your Sharpie again, and it looks amazing. So we get this all filled in just like that. Eh, maybe we'll do this part of the mouth too. Okay, clean, clean, clean. Oh, we need some orange. I could have left this yellow in my brush. And to make orange, we're gonna do a lot of yellow, and then we're gonna add a little bit of red at a time. Remember, anytime you're making your own color, you start with the lightest color first, and then add in the darker color. So red and yellow mixed together makes orange but not equal parts. It's always more of the lighter color, less of the darker color. So I can use this orange and start filling in part of my dog with this. And so I really, really, really love making my own colors. You can make hundreds and hundreds of colors just out of the primaries. And once you mix your primaries together, you make your secondaries. And if you mix a primary and a secondary together, you get a tertiary. So you can have a lot of fun mixing colors and making up your very own versions. So we're getting all of this cute little doggy filled in. There we go. Clean my brush again. And I don't know that I want a bold red on this, not just yet anyway. So I'm gonna take some white and mix in a little bit of red and that will make a pink. And then the more red that I put in, obviously the darker the pink will go. So it's really up to you. You get to be in charge of your colors. Roll the extra paint off and then very gently touch your brush to the canvas, very gently. Keep that paint where you want it. 
And if you accidentally get out of the lines, that's okay. Nobody's going to know unless you tell them, right? And besides that, this is now your very own masterpiece. So you get to paint it in exactly how you want to. There's no wrong answer. There we go. Awesome. And then I think this little heart should also be pink. There we go. And maybe this back leg back here, that little back edge. There we go. And maybe this part of the mouth. Why not? There we go. So I'm going to clean, 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 clean my brush. So we have all the colors on the plate. Let's see, maybe um, we could go a little darker blue. So I'm going to add more blue to the light blue that I made. So go a little darker blue and we could do this part of the little neck area, just like that. Yeah, and a little back leg back there. We could add even more red to our pink we made, and so that way we have almost a red, but not quite and paint that little nose in, and maybe paint that little curve line. And then maybe we could go darker green by adding even more blue to our green that we already made. So this is more blue mixed in to make a darker green. There we go. And remember, barely touch your, brush, touch your brush to the canvas so that it makes a very thin brush stroke. And go slow. You don't have to rush. There's no hurry. You can just relax and enjoy the process of this. It's actually a lot of fun to paint if you don't overthink it. And just have fun and relax a little. It doesn't have to be perfect. That is for sure. So I'm going to use this dark green and make my leaves. There we go. So I outlined and then fill in. And then outline. And fill in. Just like that. Clean, clean, clean my brush. There we go. I think I'm going to use this bright, bold red we've got going on here. This, well, reddish, pinkish color we got going. And I'm going to outline just like this. Outline, outline. There we go. and get our flower all filled in. Now this is a little bit boring of a flower, so I could take some of that lighter pink and put some little highlights. Boop, 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 just like that. I could take a little bit of that lighter green that we had and do a little boop, little boop, on our leaves. And guys, if your water gets too yucky, it's okay to take a break, go rinse it out in the sink and get some fresh water. So that way it doesn't mess up your paint colors because if your water gets too mucky, it will definitely mess up your paint colors. Now I have to be careful inside the flower because if I get too close to the pinkish reddish petals, 
I will definitely have an orange center. So I'm purposefully getting too close right here, but that was after I painted the center yellow. Um, so now I put just a little bit of an orange glow right around the edge. And let's see, how about some dark blue eyes? Ooh, we could even mix some blue and purple together and make our own indigo. So blue and purple mixed together makes the indigo. And if you accidentally paint your little dot you made for yourself, no worries. Have no fear. Artsy Rose is here and I can teach you a little trick to do. So I'm getting my eyes all filled in just like that. Then you can take your brush handle, flip it upside down, dip it in your paint with the handle, and we go straight down, straight up, straight down, straight up. And now we have a great shine in the eye. You could even add an extra shine in the eye, just like that, by using your brush handle. With this darkish bluish, I am going to give my puppy just a little extra, just a little extra going on here. Kind of creates some interest, right? Then I can go back and use my darker green, do the same thing on the green. You could even, if you wanted to, add some stripes or polka dots. So I could do like some stripes on my puppy. Oh, got to outline his little tail. There we go. And down there. I can use um, a little bit of orange and a little bit of yellow mixed together. So I make a, uh, I don't know, like a goldeny color. Oh, you can't even see that. Let me add some more orange. Dry my brush a little. I didn't get it quite dry enough. There we go. There we go. And maybe this ear has some little polka dots. Just like that. There we go. An outline right there. There. And then I can make a darker orange by mixing together some orange and red and come in this area. So we get a little outline going on in here. Little outline. There we go. Oh, a little bit right there. Clean, 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 clean. Wipe on the inside. And Forgot a little spot right here. I'm just kind of dust that off on my napkin. Sometimes you can kind of pinch your bristles like that. And we could go back in here and trace this heart, bring this heart back out. Oop. There, you want to make sure you have a nice point going on. There we go. An outline up here and right there and around the face. There we go. There we go. Oh, she's so cute, or he. Definitely going to have to name this cute little puppy. 
Okay. So I'm going to use my brush handle and mix a little bit more purple into that light purple I made. Get the extra off and dip in there and give our puppy just a few little, I'm not even really sure what these are called, little freckles, little dimples that their whiskers come out of. There we go. And on my frame, we got to jazz this up a little, right? I'm going to wipe that brush handle off. And I am going to make sure my brush is really dry. Let's flip that over. Wash, dry, 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 dry. And then now I'm going to mix together some white and turquoise and make a much softer turquoise. Okay, roll the extra off. And recreate these little triangles. Just like that. So if you have a smaller brush, you may feel a little bit more comfortable using that smaller brush when you're filling these in. Or you know what, just have at it. And if you get out of the lines, then you let it dry and the background color is darker, right? So it can totally touch up any oopsies that you have. You can go back with your original background color and touch up your oopsies. So I'm working my way around this frame. I always outline and then fill in. Outline, then fill in. There we go. Now, say you're not all about drawing your own canvas designs, right? Because that's a little intimidating. Um, I actually sell pre-drawn canvases, so you can go to my website at artsyrose.com and order some pre-drawn canvases. And I have over 75 designs on my website. So that's kind of a fun little route you can take. And I have art kits or painting kits that you can order on there as well. So you would be able to get the pre-drawn canvas of your choice, uh, a couple of paint brushes, paint plate for mixing, the paints, Sharpie, napkins, and an Artsy Rose tote bag that you can keep all your stuff in and even more art stuff in. And the cool thing about the bag is it's just a canvas type tote bag and so you could even paint and customize your bag which is super cool. So right now I am going in and just touching these up a little. Then like I was saying earlier if you feel like you need to you can always go back with your original color and any oopsies you feel like you need to touch up you can do that. Just like that. So remember, this is your painting. You get to put all your own special touches on it. There's no wrong way of doing it. So don't be hard on yourself. And it's a process. The first layer is just the first layer. And then you're building lots of layers on top of it. And so you have to trust that process and you have to trust that it is not going to be perfect at the beginning, but by the time you're all finished, it's going to be a masterpiece. And the best part is, is it will be your very own masterpiece. There we go. The last thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my turquoise and I'm going to take a little bit of red. Red and green are complementary colors. 
So green's kind of like turquoise. So I use a little bit of red to darken that up. And then I'm going to use this darker and I'm going to come right in here. And I'm trying not to breathe too big so I don't oopsie this and clean up this edge. Just like that. Ta da! Gives it a nice clean border. You could, even if you wanted to, kind of add just a little bit of this in between just for fun. I don't have hardly any on my brush right now. It's just almost like a dry brush technique where I just have a little bit on there and I'm just sort of almost like it's scratching it onto the surface. Just to give it a little extra something, a little extra texture maybe. A little more dimension. Here we go. There, that's kind of fun just to go in there with that. And then I feel like maybe my flower could use a little extra something. So I'm going to go in with straight red. Um, that's sort of noticeable, but not super noticeable. So just like I used red to darken up my turquoise, I can use a little bit of turquoise or I could use my green I made to darken up my red. Now, if you go too much, it will take it, oops, it will take it to the um, like burgundy side. It'll take it to the maroon or, or um, darker edge of the red scale. So we just go right around that flower, kind of clean up our edges a little bit. There we go. Maybe go around the center, just like that. And I am gonna take a little bit of my red and I'm gonna darken up this green that I made over here. So a little bit of red into the green is gonna darken it up. And I am going to clean up this flower and clean up this flower just like that. All right. So I feel like we have created a super cute puppy from a totally blank canvas, which is not typically my style, but I know that some of you guys have blank canvases or blank paper at home, and you're really excited to use your paints and you just want to know how. So hopefully you've learned a couple of techniques and the most important thing to remember is after this dries, if you don't love it, you paint over it, no big deal. Now, again, after it dries, another thing you can do is resharpie all of your Sharpie lines that you created at the very beginning, and it cleans up all your edges and it brings it all back together, super nice and clean. It's kind of amazing what that Sharpie does. And if it's a little bit thicker, it's even more amazing. So. I hope that you guys had a great time. I enjoyed painting with you and sharing a little bit of my knowledge. Head on over to my website, artsyrose.com, and you can get more details about those paint kits and see what other opportunities we offer. Make sure and stay tuned on our social media to see what's coming next. And please, please post what you uh, came up with. I want to see your finished product, so make sure and tag at Artsy Rose Academy. We can't wait to hang out and do some more art with you.